Welcome everyone to The Great Debate, where today we are talking about things anime does not do that well. It doesn't show up a lot in anime. Things that just do don't seem to latch on with the general anime viewership for whatever reason. And I talk about this because we all, certainly here in the chat room and folks generally watching this, it's sort of an anime channel, we love anime. And we could probably got into it for some genre that it just really really kick tail in anime. You know, some sci-fi action story like Cowboy Bebop, um, or something really intellectually challenging, or, you know, a fantasy uh, action series like Naruto or Fairy Tail, um, or, uh, you know, boys action like, like Dragon Ball Z. But there are certainly things that anime doesn't do very well, and it doesn't show up a lot in anime. And I think it's, it's helpful to kind of define that negative space. To say, not only here are the things that we love, but here are the things that seem to be out there, right? And what immediately leaps to mind when I talk about this are, is anime aimed squarely at an adult audience? And I don't mean adult as in, you know, 18 plus sexy time. Uh, I mean adult as in stories about adult characters dealing with adult topics in an adult way. Mature and sophisticated storytelling, as Crispin Freeman likes to, likes to describe it and certainly that exists in anime but it's not what you see you know most of the shows every season aiming for you know they're, they're mostly aimed at a tween to young teen audience relatively speaking um spin to win talks about good direction and that's an interesting point and he wants a moment to explain i i definitely don't disagree but i'm curious where you're going with that um <clears throat> i think Anime generally has better direction than most other animation. Um, I think one of the things anime does well is um, camera movement and use of camera compared to, say, American cartoons. Um, but certainly, yeah, there's a lot more direction than that, so I'm curious about that. But yeah, serious, mature storylines don't sell very well. And I think part of that is something we were talking about before the, the segment started. I think that is a hard thing to pull off in any medium. You look at Hollywood movies, and they tend to be kind of dumbed down, and yes, they're aimed at adults, but they're also more aimed at, they're certainly comprehensible by teenagers, right? It's meant to be simple. Um, <clears throat> so I think that is, that is just, it's, it's always difficult to get a, a mature, complex sort of anime series. And also, which in general, this is the other interesting thing, is you rarely see anime with adult protagonists. Most of the time it's teenagers and or kids. And as we only have one of the just fundamental aspects of humanity is that we grow more mature and more um, sophisticated as we grow up, usually. So, um, and that doesn't mean that kids are, you know, complete idiots, but it means they don't have experience, and with experience comes wisdom. So that is one of the problems, is that um, when your characters are relatively immature, it's hard to tell complex stories with them, right? Um, so Spin, you're saying, um, when you look at the stills and shots that are posted on Tumblr, it's usually the same two or three directors, do you mean, um, what do you mean by that? Um, I'm, I'm confused. Um, Game Escape says, I've all, uh, one issue I've always had is that very few anime s series sustain and develop a strong intellectual premise. That is certainly true. Although, again, I think that is true of most mediums. Um, well, maybe not. Actually, I, I take that back. Uh, because I would argue that American storytelling is usually pretty good about um, uh, developing its premise and telling a story that it starts somewhere and then expands on that and goes somewhere. Um, and I, I, I can certainly see that as a, as a complaint about anime that often you'll have a, a, an interesting premise and you'll kind of follow that premise but not really go anywhere with it. It's, it's sort of, okay, we're, we are following the steps that we would, anyone would expect to follow with this premise, but we're not really going deeper with it. Um, you know, we're not really examining it, we're not really understanding why it would be. Um, or what impact it, is, um, it has, or, or what, uh, uh, what it means, basically. So, I think that is certainly uh, uh, an issue. Um, 
Um, so, Spin, are you, are you saying that um, one of the issues is sort of a fetishization of certain of a certain visual style for um, uh, uh, for for anime? Um, taking risks. Okay, yep, yeah, that's certainly certainly an issue. Um, uh, and I assume you mean taking risks visually, that you t tend to see the same kind of imagery, the same kind of shots over and over again. There's that famous YouTube video where it's like every anime OP ever, where they show clips from various anime um, openings, and it's all the characters, you know, leaping in slow motion, and uh, you know, the, the camera zooming around characters, just these kind of stock shots that are used over and over and over again in opening credit sequences. Um... <clears throat> So, Anthony, um, sexualization of young anime characters is certainly a thing, but I don't think it's necessarily a um, something that anime is doing poorly in this sense. Um, I, mean, it, I, I think that, that is a tangential aspect to it. I'm talking more about stuff that, that anime seems to be falling down on, or that just doesn't seem to be... You know, I would argue it's doing that successfully. <laughs> they certainly, people certainly seem to be responding to that in the sense that people keep making it. Right? Um... Um, right, and so, and, and it's one of those things, is that, and like with a lot of stuff, people talk about, talk about this with video games. Folks like, you know, why aren't there any mature, sophisticated adult video games out there? It's like, well, there are, it's just Call of Duty is not that thing. I mean, there's there's serious moments in Call of Duty, you know, but the, the big AAA titles are not going to be the things that make you sit down and, and re rethink your life. You know, Life is Strange might do that, or... Or journey, or some of these other, you know, um, other stories. It's always going to be on the on the sides more than in the in the mainstream, with the occasional exceptions of like, um, um, uh, uh, um, the Last of Us as being sort of one of those things that managed to hit despite being a mature, sophisticated story. I say that as somebody who's not played it, but it's sitting on the PS4. Um, but I'm, I'm sure I eventually will. Um, but certainly, I mean, you don't need to play that game to know what it is. Um, generic tragic backstories. I don't know. Again, I, I think that is generic tragic backstories. Something that, that's endemic of, of most media, right? I see that that issue where you get, um, uh, you know, I get generic tragic backstories in most American cartoons, American live action shows, you know, sci fi novels. Uh, video games, video games, my gosh, generic tragic backstories. Um, I don't know. Um, although I, I, I see where you're coming from there. I, 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 I will definitely agree that backstory is often a problem in anime in that you often get backstories that are, if not generic, then not relevant or that don't really impact the show itself, which is what relevant means. Um, but where characters are kind of thrown into something and there's nothing in their backstory that helps them with that, or um, or we find out things about their backstory and it's like, oh, okay, this, this means something in this one particular moment, but it doesn't really inform the character in any deep way. Um, that's certainly something you see a lot in, in anime. Hello, Sunil Shah. So that's an interesting point, is that you don't get lots of that kind of deep stuff um, in terms of characters. And that might be a cultural thing, um, where a lot of Japanese stories seem to be about a character just thrown into a situation, uh, again, in media res, where you throw, you, you know, um, you don't need to know somebody's backstory to understand what's going on there. And when you do find out their backstory, um, that can help you understand where they're coming from, but it's really more about these personalities interacting in this moment. Um, there's that idea that you can have, um, I, I guess, Japanese media is more comfortable with throwing characters together and watching how they interact regardless of their backstory, where the personality is more important than everything else. Um... <clears throat> Do, do, do. 
Spintowin says, um, having mainstream appeal on a season-by-season -season basis. I'm confused about uh, what you're saying there. Are you saying that anime... I mean, what does mainstream appeal on a season-by-season -season basis mean? Because it seems to me shows that are successful in season one and they go into season two are generally as successful in season two or season three. Like, I don't, I don't see... Like a season one that's usually popular in a season two just tanks. Um, you know, again, it happens so sometimes. Um, you know, Attack on Titan season two did fine, right? It did, that did well. Um, but maybe I'm not understanding the, the point there. Story is an issue, and this is an issue that has been going back for decades. Uh, trying to sustain a story from um, over the course of 26 to 52 episodes has traditionally been a problem. Um, with so, okay, so, so you're saying... So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still not understanding because you're, you're talking about you know, season by season as in anime series that should just be going on a new episode every single week. Because that's extraordinarily rare. Um, for more, I mean, there are only a few shows that do that. Most of them are kids shows, um, and and the rest are shows that have like the backings of massive companies. Um, you know, the, the Dragon Ball Zs, the Fairy Tales, the Naruto's, um, and those absolutely have mainstream appeal. So again, I'm, I'm kind of confused on that. But um, yeah, certainly um, often shows that are 50 episodes long drag you know m most of the time those have significant periods where not much is going on and also like those long stories that go on for hundreds of episodes you have those long periods where very little is happening I mean, maybe that's what you're talking about um that you have you know the, 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 the quality of the story varies a lot from uh arc to arc and episode to episode um, and I think that's just a, a matter of just the amount of time and effort it takes to make an animated series. You know, no one else in the world is making as much animation as Japan does and trying to produce that much. Um, so, so Neil's saying anime should be made after its manga counterpart is settled and taken enough time to adapt an anime. So Naruto should not have come out until this year, is what you're saying. You know, and, and, you know... Um, one Piece, there should be no One Piece anime. That's what you're saying. That's, that's, a, that's a tall order. <laughs> you, know, you have anime that take decades to complete. Uh, your manga that takes decades to complete. And so you're saying nobody gets that anime until the, the manga gets to the final volume. And it's like, well, but um, that's a problem. Besides, th th there's very little um, so I, I completely disagree on the idea that there is no such thing as good filler or bad filler and there shouldn't be uh, any filler. That, that, is, that, that is a fundamental misunderstanding of, of the idea of uh, adaptation, right? Um, an adaptation is not... Uh, there is no point, in my opinion, in just taking the manga and animating it panel by panel. Because then why are you making it into an, an animation, right? Like th That is going to be its own thing. So it is absolutely worthwhile. When you're adapting something, it's going to be different. And so you have to adapt it wisely and figure that out. After enough time, like after two to three years after the, after the manga's release. That's what they do now, though. They, 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 they don't start, you know, they didn't start the Naruto anime the week that the, the, first, volu the, the first issue of, of Naruto came out. They, they still do wait. Um, so Joseph, uh, Joseph was talking about uh, American comics. With American comics, the most popular comic writers seem to write for adult audiences like Brian K. Vaughan, Garth Ennis, Frank Miller, Alan Moore. I disagree with that because I don't think those are the most popular comic writers. You know, the most popular comics are um, X-Men, 
Thor. Um, you know, it, it's not whatever Alan Moore did this month. Alan Moore's popular, but X Men outsells Alan Moore ten to one, right? And that's general. That's not generally aimed at teenagers. Um, Spindewen says, "Hasn't anime as an industry been bad about giving young directors and talent chances?" That's a good point. That's that. That's a a, a good issue. Um, I would say it's no worse than than. Well, it is possibly worse. Um, I mean, think about American cinema. Until recently, until um, like Marvel movies and that whole revolution, um, it was hard to get your start as a director. Like you had to make a bunch of cool stuff, right? Um, uh, let's see here. Um, so I, I think, you know, um, that issue exists to an extent with other media, but it is, it is certainly very, very strong in anime. Um, not so much manga. Manga has lots of, of new talent all the time. Um, but anime does tend to be a very conservative medium um, in the sense of, like you say, um, characters and such. Uh, of, 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 I'm sorry, of, of giving new directors chances. Um, it happens, but it's, it's tough. Uh, and that's partly just because of, you know, the, the medium being what it is, being this very, um, uh, you know, it's an advertisement, more or less. Um, well, uh, so, so, you know, um, it is certainly true the anime needs to catch up to the manga, but that's going to happen no matter what. You know, the pace of an anime will always outpace a manga. You know, a hundred people working on an anime series that, 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 that lasts for 24 minutes a week is always going to outpace one to three people drawing a manga, right? I don't know how you fix that. Um, and I don't know, I don't, you know, um, you know, there's no way of coming up with a thing. And also you have the problem that, you know, manga does, manga is not made with a definitive end point in time where, um, you know, in other words, when Kishimoto started Naruto, he did not say he did not say to himself, um, "This manga will end on this date." He just started Naruto, and then that went wherever it went. Um, and this happens with with most popular uh, manga series. Folks have an idea of, of the length of the story, but some things happen end very early. Some things happen very end or uh, end very uh, much later, and it depends on popularity. It depends on a lot of different factors, right? So I, I think ketchup is endemic to the fact that it's an ad, adaptive medium, right? Same thing with The Walking Dead. You know, The Walking Dead has this issue, and it doesn't. You know, and The Walking Dead have been going on for a while in the comics when the TV show started, but the TV show is so popular that they just keep on making more seasons, and it's just kind of like there's, you know, you know, they could not have known that they were going to be so popular that they were going to run out of comic material. Right, that was something that they kind of figured, you know, they figured when they, they were starting this, that okay, we've got plenty of, of comic material, we can do a couple of seasons, we'll be done, but now it's got to expand. Same thing with uh, Game of Thrones, where it's like, uh, how do we adapt this in a way that honors the original material, but also, like, tells that story. So you bring up Full Metal Alchemist, and that's funny, because people love Full Metal Alchemist. Like, that was not a failure. You know, that anime series, people people loved it. And it was a hugely successful anime series. So yes, it was a different ending. But it worked for them. It was fine. Trigun's a great example, where the anime is arguably more successful than the manga series. Um, because they changed the ending. They, made, they came up with their own ending. Which the manga got blessed. But still, right? Um, maybe they go until a particular narrative arc is it in a manga is over before adapting it. Well, th th possibly, but then you're not, you know, the purpose of the anime is not to adapt an arc necessarily, right? It is to advertise the manga. Um, uh, now that is what you have more like, no, 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 you're, you're, you're getting confused here, Sunil. Um, Saying that um, you wouldn't have needed uh, Brotherhood if FMA was adapted properly 
confuses the point. Um, FMA, the original FMA was successful and loved. Thus, it was proper. It worked, right? It was different than the manga, and so it was, it was sufficiently successful, and enough people had read the manga, they were like, we'd like an anime adaptation of this, please, and they made that. But FMA was not a failure. The original FMA was, no, there, there was nothing improper about that. Right? You know, Brotherhood was a an added bonus extra, right? It was not because FMA did poorly, right? Different, different, different problems there. Um, ah, Spindlewing, you do get to an in interesting question about endings. I think that is that is something we should talk about as well. Um, um, so, uh, but we want to get back to this whole idea of of adapting arcs. I think that is what they're doing now. Um, you know. They didn't start Attack on Titan and then just do it for 100 episodes or 300 episodes. They said, we're going to adapt this much of Attack on Titan and then come back, you know, a year or two later, once there's more material, we can adapt that. And that seems to be the solution, is instead of trying to, you know, do that, do you really need two different shows for that? How many episodes of Dragon Ball Z do you need? Right? Answer that question and you know how many Fullmetal Alchemist shows you, you need to have. How many Naruto shows do you need? Um, uh, so, yeah, I think that is how they're kind of solving that problem, is you, you adapt an arc for a season, and you go away. You come back and you adapt an arc for a season, or, you know, one core, two core, whatever. Um, right, and like Inuyasha, we're like, okay, we, we kind of, we, we did a whole bunch of this story, we're going to stop. I'm going to come back later and finish it. Um, it's basically what um, uh, Full Metal Panic did, where they adapted different parts of the story, and then the author knew he was coming to the, the, the final, you know, the, 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 the ending of the novels, and so he basically said, let's wait, um, you know, let me finish the novels, then we can come back and finish the anime in a way that, that is appropriate for both the folks who have read the novels and the folks who are watching the anime, as opposed to trying to kind of do them both at once. And it just took longer than they thought it would. Um, and I think Full Metal uh, Panic is, an, again, a great example of where, you know, you do 26 episodes and then 13 episodes. You kind of, you build this story over time, um, but you can do, you know, a series and a sequel series, etc., kind of better than you can say, okay, we're going to do 78 episodes that will then tell this story. Um, and then you can kind of, you can, you can massage that story better for seasons, uh, uh, in anime than you can when you're trying to do, you know, adapt it all in one long, big chunk. Van Riley, you bring up a great point, CGI. Um, you're absolutely right that CGI is something that I think anime has been struggling with for a long time, but they're figuring it out now. Um, you know, there's, there's certainly bad CGI, um, but there's bad CGI everywhere, right? Uh, you know, there's bad CGI in America, but, um, you know, integrating CGI with anime is a particularly delicate thing, right? Because, you know, it's not just adding a, a puzzle box on, on there or adding a wisp of smoke or something. Uh, you have this very particular visual style in anime, and CGI tends to clash with that very easily. Um, so where we started seeing it being done really effectively was with stuff like vehicles, where you can sell shade, you know, a car and have it drive in and that's, that's okay because a car is this very shiny metallic, you know, thing. Whereas a, an anime character is hard to do that. But, um, in Idolmaster, I think helped this a lot. Idol, Idolmaster is the first video game I saw where the characters, thanks Anil, the characters in the video game looked like anime characters. Like they nailed that anime character look. And I think that was kind of the first, the, 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 the first indication that, oh, okay, yes, it is possible to cell shade a CGI model and move it in a way that, um, um, that fools the eye into saying, okay, this, this looks like anime. Not exactly the same, but, but, but very, very close. And so then we started to see more of that sort of integrated into anime to the point where you have now stuff like, I keep bringing up Land of the Lustrous, 
so that is one of those things we just kind of have to we have to, you have to um um we have to be kind of patient with cgi because i think that's one of those things where um it's been done poorly but also they're figuring out how to um how, how to not just make everything cgi but how to integrate it in and that that's harder right um so yeah it, it's 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 complicated but cgi i think in general um until they can get everything up to the uh, quality of a land of the lustrous it's gonna be hard for cgi to kind of take over in there um i have not seen the cgi of berserk uh, well i've seen trailers um so the question is is the cgi in berserk clashing or is it well developed for the technology available um I'm one of these people where I'm oh I always like to see experimental different takes on things. When I saw the trailers for Berserk, it you know, I was not horrified. I was like I I would be fine watching that. It certainly looks different. It might look very choppy in practice, um, but you know, I didn't recoil in horror from that art from that, that art style and kind of that approach to the animation. And obviously you know, what you see in a trailer is very different from what you see in the actual work. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, I certainly know people who like the CGI Berserk at least as much as the original animated Berserk. Um, it has its fans because it is a very different visual, because it, it's a different visual take on that story. So it's, you know, it, that depends. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's very difficult to, uh, uh, to tell because, and that's, that's a great example actually of where CGI can also just be. An approach so a great example of this is an anime from around the year 2000 which I've talked about on here I think before uh, it's a very mature story in the sense that it does have sexy stuff but it's also thoughtful uh, and I'm blanking on the name of it right now um, but it is basically it is an all CGI uh, OVA uh, but the characters are all androids um, in a world where all the humans have died out and the approach was to be very static with camera shots with camera angles um and to kind of be minimal in the movement so that everyone kind of looks like a doll and indeed they said we we went back and we studied uh bunraku and other japanese uh puppet uh theater and approaches to puppetry and tried to sort of mimic that so the characters don't you know the characters aren't meant to move fluidly the way humans actually move they have this stylization to them and as a result, that's something that actually works quite well. You know, I watched that and I was like, okay, like this is obviously, you know, CGI, um, but it was a an effective approach to take that adds a visual. Um, it it and this is the important thing is that whenever you're doing anything, you gotta you gotta figure out if it supports the work. Uh, you you don't just make something anime because you want it to be anime. You make you do it you know you make it anime because animation is an effective. Um, medium for that thing fairy tale one piece work way better in animation than they'd work in live action just because trying to make that believable in live action is just really really hard um it's a good example of why, why roni kenshin was able to be adapted into live action well because it wasn't um you know it has some some um it has some kind of shonen silly over the top um uh, effects in combat right but the character designs the personalities and so forth um it, it is set in a specific japanese period so it is much more close to reality than a fairy tale where it's like how do you represent this in a, in a way uh, you know visually um in an effective way without spending you know 300 million dollars um and so cgi is again one of those things where you have to decide how you have to do that and exactly the, the right way to approach uh, those stories. Um, it was not called number six. No, number six was a different thing. Um, I just, I, I, I know the name is not number six. Um, so yeah, it's, it's tough. So, and so um, Anthony Cockham brings out the, um, the Alita trailer that came out. And it's a good example where, you know, it's CGI live action, but also that's got a ridiculous budget behind it. And that's why it looks so good. Um, so CGI is kind of running that, writing that line in anime where it often is not handled well, 
but they're finding the right places to put it. All right, I think we have covered this topic very, very nicely. Um, thank you all uh, in the chat room for being involved in this. I do this every single week on my Friday anime stream, and I hope you will join me for that every week. There's always always more. Probably be some, be some folks screaming in the comment section about, you forgot this. Um, so let me know, and maybe we will reopen this topic later on. Uh, but anyway, thank you all for that uh, for now, and until next time, we will be uh, debating more soon.